This week is a ginger growler of a week. You know how that works. First you go to your packet of uh, ginger growlers. Uh, that's as illustrated by uh, Gary Lavin. Lovely, lovely stuff. You open it up, you grab a ginger growler and you toss it into the melee and then watch the denizens of the Westminster village obediently trot after it like the well-trained poodles they are. Uh, have you seen this report of young girls getting gang raped year in year out in English towns? Oh, sorry, I'd love to read it, but I'm a fully credentialed investigative reporter, so I'm trotting obediently after this week's ginger growler. What about COVID vaccines? causing a massive drop in sperm counts. Oh, I'll uh, read it when I get back. Nothing wrong with my sperm count. It's off the charts every time some new ginger growler comes along for me to chase. Well, the first growler of the week for July is some bloke nobody had ever heard of until 20 minutes ago. He's a man called Chris Pincher. All together now, Pincher by name, Pincher by nature as the already tedious joke has it. He's been known for over half a decade to have a penchant for pinching, but Theresa May uh, chose to rehabilitate him, brought him back into government, and stuck him in the Privy Council. That's for life. Shame on you, Lady May. And so a serial pincher rose to be Deputy Chief Whip until he had to resign for drunkenly groping two men in the Carlton Club on Thursday night. I have to say that if I had to name a single demographic group anywhere on the planet, I would be least up for copping a feel of entirely on aesthetic grounds. It would be the membership of the Carlton Club. But Shakern Asson Grope. The only element of this story that caught my eye was that it took place in the Carlton Club in St. James's and thereby embodied almost too perfectly this dismal twilight of British conservatism. There is still a Carlton Club, and it still has that magnificent portrait of the third Marquess of Salisbury at the foot of the staircase. But these days it is apparently no more than the gents at Piccadilly Circus once were, a conveniently central location for seedy cottages in a hurry. The outward forms of British greatness are still with us. The splendid buildings, the great oil paintings, a pretty decent Dover soul in the dining room. But it's just dress-up games now, and even then you can't help noticing the furtive paw of some deputy assistant Lord Privy Seal creeping up your thigh. We need more than the dress-up games right now. Every minute you spend talking about the Ginger Growler of the Week is a minute you're not talking about anything that really matters. We shall have a special later this week on those of your fellow Britons injured and bereaved by the COVID vaccines because it is an unfolding disaster getting worse by the day. And the pom-pom girls of the group Think Media are still in 2021 propaganda mode. And Sajid Jabbit. We've still had no response to the questions we submitted, but Mr. Jabbit is still pushing jabs on anything that moves, notwithstanding the growing body of evidence that every additional jab makes things just a little worse. Then we have open borders and useless police. We'll be talking about both in a few minutes with Kelvin McKenzie and Harvey Proctor. But they intersect across towns up and down the realm where multi culty squeamishness about Pakistani Muslim, whoops, whoops, sorry, I mean Asian, Asian rape gangs, combines with a wholly corrupted police culture to ensure that young English girls can be gang raped and raped again and raped some more over and over for years on end. Rotherham, Rochdale, Oldham, oh well, say the cynics. They're just northern working class towns, who cares? Oh, yeah? Northern working class towns like Oxford, Banbury, Aylesbury, all getting a bit leafy now, isn't it? Almost as if in a land without shame, turning a blind eye to child gang rape leads to more child gang rape. And as I always say, let's swap the casting and imagine what would happen if Pakistani Muslim girls were being gang raped on an industrial scale by white working class Englishmen. Do you think the media would be discreetly referring to them as quote-unquote European men? Would Labour MPs be telling the girls they ought to put up with it in the interests of diversity? 